All right, guys, we're back. I'm your boy DeAnthony. Adan. And we're Break Room Blitz, baby. What's up, guys? Welcome to the page. Welcome to this video. Welcome. Yeah, just welcome. Thanks for joining. We love you all. Yeah, thanks for joining. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, we're the best reviewers online today. We feel pretty confident about that. We would point. like to be. I hope we are. Go yeah. ahead and like us if you do think that. If you agree with us, go ahead and like. I feel like we have really good content. And if you like the content, go ahead and hit the notification button for us, okay? Okay? Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So, <laughs> I don't know why people keep putting cameras in front of me. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, went to go see a great movie. We can start it off. Great movie. It was a great movie. Detroit. Whew. So, if you haven't seen any of the trailers mm -hmm. or any of the previews in the movie theater, and you're watching this, just you just stumbled upon this, you need to be looking this up. We'll put the trailer down in the link. So if you want to see the trailer, you can see the trailer and take your ass to the movies to go see it. Uh, especially if you're African American, because you might not get to see the, too many of these movies, okay? Absolutely. Yeah. Alright, so pretty much it is a uh, I would just say a horror story. <laughs> it's not a horror, but oh, it's a horrific man. event that happens in 1967 uh, with some young black men and police officers, and they pretty much um, executed these black men uh, for, for nothing, pretty much. Crimes they didn't commit. Definitely. And you know what? Um, it was something that I didn't even know about, and right. I like to think I know a lot about my history, right. uh, but... There's so many horrific events right. that I don't think I can ever just know everything. You know, especially because I was born in 1986. So I'm just catching up. Yeah, you know, well, It's not that long ago, even looking at back at it now. You know? Right. So we got John Boyega, you know, Star Wars. Star Wars. Hopefully he's a Jedi Knight next in yeah. part eight. Never know. Oh, yeah. uh, Will Poulter. He's pretty much the, the main villain here. Uh, we got Algie Smith. From the New Edition story, which I know all y'all love the New Edition story, so you might want to go see that. Uh, Jacob Lattimore um, from Slight, yeah, Slight from uh, that Christmas movie with Jennifer Hudson. I forgot the name of it. Oh yeah, um, Will Smith. Oh yeah, and then uh, what is that one with Will Smith? <sighs> The Christmas movie with Will Smith. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, uh, we'll post, you'll see pictures. Pictures. Um, and then we got Jason Mitchell from Straight Outta Compton. Easy E. Easy E. Yeah. He's always in the mix of some movie. Yeah. You know, uh, so we got a great cast. And a lot of other people that you're probably going to recognize or should recognize anyway. Right. If you're into some TV shows. Uh, even Anthony Mackie, I thought, was okay. Was we know we don't, that I don't like him. <laughs> but... He was okay. He wasn't Falcon. Or <laughs> easy. So <laughs> Right. Um so you know what? I'm gonna just jump we're gonna just jump in what I thought. Um I thought it was a great movie. You know, there was some little backlash because it is a black story told by a European <clears throat> excuse me, y'all. It is a black story told by a European and a lot of times when Europeans tell our story, they leave a lot out. Or they sugarcoat it or whitewash it. Um, but being that I wasn't able to fact check, I thought what they represented was truth. Probably was fact. Uh, it reminded me of today. As you can see, I got the Kaepernick shirt on with the American flag. And we all know Very about the Absolutely. Kaepernick situation. Even now, him not being able to get a job, even though there's probably 10 other quarterback starting quarterbacks he's better than um so it was it, it was relevant i thought what they portrayed was probably what happened maybe not as as harsh it probably was worse i, I could imagine but the beginning i thought was great even like the beginning credits when they're just trying to like uh, oh. describe what the the actual atmosphere is like i thought I that was that. great yeah um i thought the storytelling was great we definitely got a hero to villain because and pretty much all the black people were the heroes. Oh, and uh, pretty much all the police officers were the villains. Um, and I thought it was just a great way to tell a story. Because it didn't... At first, I thought it was going to be like a lot of different stories at that time. Because right. they, they, they showed a little girl getting shot. 
Um, they showed a, a, another boy getting shot in the back, right. being chased by police. They showed a lot of different perspectives, I thought, um, in that different time frame. Right. They didn't always have like the end result of it, no. but they were just showing you the type of things that went on. And I thought it was a great way yeah. to tell the story. It wasn't just focused on you know, John Boy or no, whatever. Yeah, yeah. You know, different so, perspectives. Right. So mm -hmm. I thought that it was a great way to tell a story, mm -hmm. and I felt it was very impactful. You know, I was able to um, relate to the to the story. It wasn't like, oh hell, no, that would never happen. Um, there was one. It, I thought that the scenario drew drew out a little too long, but I mean, if that's what happened, that's what happened. Yeah. So it was it was cool. And at the end, I really felt honest. I'm be honest with you, and you. Um, I wanted to cry at the end. You know, it was it was a very sad, depressing scenario. You know, because again. The black people got no justice. You know, they didn't even get convicted for the, the little thing, the, the right. assault. I'm like, what did the world beat up? Who did that? We did it to ourselves. Be in the hospital. No. You know? So, yeah. you know, but as far as a storyteller, I thought that um, the lady who, I forgot the lady's name that actually directed it, Catherine Bigelow. Bigelow. Hmm. I thought that Catherine, Catherine Bigelow did a very good job as far as portraying the story, you know, and wanted it to be true to heart, you know. And honestly, if you were upset that the European lady told our story, I think that there's enough black directors that can tell the story. So we just shouldn't be mad, okay? You know, it's been... You know, 40 years, and we never told the story. So, honestly, I think we shouldn't be mad at it. She did a good job, and I would definitely recommend going to go see it. Don't worry about what other people are saying, or who, who directed it, who produced it. You know what? There's a lot of African Americans in the movie, and they, they have jobs as actors. So, go support it, okay? Mm -hmm. I don't want to hear no excuses. They did now, a great job. if I had to rate it, I'm going to give it a 4.5. Out of five stars for sure, maybe like four point seven oh, out of man. five stars because it was. I thought it was a little, a little long, and I thought they got out of character just a little bit. The the police officers, but overall, it was a great movie. Yeah. What do you think? Can you what? Do you, what were your thoughts? Oh man, I, you hit it on every single part. But if I had to give it a rating right now, I'm gonna give it a five out of five. This this movie, I, I couldn't ask for any more. They're, they're, they're telling me a piece of history that I, I absolutely see the way that it was going. It, it's a new movie. I think it's a, a it's a, something that needs to be told uh, so that we can see how far we've come, which, I mean, it, it did make me very depressed. But that, that, to me, like, tells me, you know, it made me feel for, you know, the situation for what it was. You know, I was angry. I was upset. I was sad. And I, I just saw that the justice system was just like not even present, you know. And mm -hmm. then ultimately, you know, like it, uh, th these people with enough hate, you know, it's just overpowering, you know, that like w w when is this going to be enough, you know, basically that was just running through my head, you know. Right, because I don't even think like that. I don't think to hate anybody. Right. I'm not going out of my way, out of my day. Out to, of your way. Right. Definitely yeah. out of the way. Very out of the way, you know. To hate I mean, on someone, uh, it, it, it was. It's a struggle back then, and there are still people struggling now to just to make ends meet, you know. And oh man, it, it was just really heartfelt. I, I felt, you know, very sad at the end of the movie for sure. That's how we felt about the movie, guys. It was a great movie. Definitely go see it. Uh, now this is the part where we're going to say some spoilers. You know, we just want to talk. We want to have a discussion because these type of things need to be discussed. They're relevant. Because this issue, with, just with Colin Kaepernick, is happening because we don't want to talk about stuff. They don't want to, they don't want him to play football because they'd rather not have the discussion of the injustices that happen in this country. Right. You know, no one is against the flag. No one is against the country. But there are some things that need to happen, and us as African Americans, we do not want to continue to do our day to day life as if things don't need to change. Right. So we need to have a discussion. So spoiler alert: we're not going to spoil too much. Right. But I mean, it's a it's a, it's a true story. How can we spoil a true story? I just hope that you know maybe something in this conversation, this discussion, 
inspires you to go see this movie. If you saw the trailer and you still weren't sure about it, at least that we can give you some insight as to the way it made us feel, because it was very heartfelt, this entire movie was. Definitely. It was very dramatic. The way that everything was portrayed, I definitely see like what you mean as far as like it, it, it was probably way worse at the right. time, and, and I 100% believe that. Absolutely. You know, so if you don't want to see any more, no spoilers, then turn it off now. Go ahead, but hit the like button, though. Don't, don't forget about that. <laughs> I and appreciate notification. you guys. You know, um, and comment. Let me know what you guys thought if you saw it. But so we start off, you know, it's it's the Detroit riots, 1967. I think that's what they put on the screen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's a it's a very tense time. You know, and they start off. With, and this is, and we're gonna, we're gonna just have a, a real discussion. They start off with the black guy that's a police officer going in there to be the face of the rest of the department right. to raid this black party. It was an unlicensed club at the time. To me, it looked like a party. It, it, it looked like a party. You I have mean, you have servicemen, guys that are veterans in war. They're 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 uniform. Right, they're, they're just in chilling, uniform. having a good time. It li they had a banner that said "Welcome Home." Right, right. It's a party. You if, know, they get raided. And mm -hmm. to me, and this is the, another issue within, you know, the police department, that they'll hire the black guy in, in order to make it seem like, well, even he thinks that they're all bad. Right. You know, and I think that's a, a real problem. I don't even think black people should even be police officers unless there's a group of you guys and you're all going to be policing your own community. If not, if you're going to be harassing people like in... Boys in the Hood. I was going to say that, yeah. Then you don't need to be a police officer, right? You know, and it's really, it's really sad that that, that they do that. Um, but you know what? The one thing that they brought up. I'm sorry, I don't mean to just keep going, but you can cut me off anything. No, let's discuss they, it. <laughs> John Boyega's, uh, John Boyega's character was a security guard, an armed security guard, right? And he goes to go save this other black guy from getting his ass whipped by the police officer. Mm -hmm. And that black guy calls him uh, Uncle Tom. Mm -hmm. Now, that is something that we always call black people who we think are uh, house Negroes, um, bougie Negroes, um, you know, someone who we think is, is a sellout. I did not know that. And sorry, it's all yeah. education. Yeah, We're all yeah, education absolutely. here. You yeah, know, I'm no secrets a lot here. Today. And but the thing is, the Uncle Tom in the book was a, the, actually the good guy. He was the guy who would help the slaves out. He was a, a house Negro. He helped the slaves out, but the 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 field slaves didn't like him because he was in the house. I see. Yeah. But he wouldn't snitch on them. He went to to help them out when he could. He just so happened to live in the house. And the, the fact that he goes to save this other black guy and he gets called an Uncle Tom is exactly what the book is about when, uh, you know, they're, 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 everyone thinks Uncle Tom is a bad thing. Mm -hmm. So when he's calling him Uncle Tom, Uncle Tom, it's supposed to be a derogatory thing, but really Boyega is actually playing the real role of Uncle Tom. I'm actually helping you. Yes, yeah. I'm in a higher position. But I'm helping you. And and the kid was young. He you was know, young. He, he was young. And so it's just like, if I don't help this youngster get home, then like, how, how, how much worse am I going to be? Right. That right. I could have helped him and I didn't. Exactly. But so what the, what the little boy should have called him was Sambo. Sambo was the one that was ratting people out, that was telling Massa on the other slaves. He Sambo was uh, Samuel Jackson character oh, in Django. Django, yes. that is Oof. Sambo, and that's what the, the young men meant to say. But we always say Uncle Tom all the time. But it's it's really not that. So it, it was a lot of things that they brought in the movie that everyone might not understand. But um, like I said, I like to think I know my history a little bit, and so I, I know what that meant. Mm -hmm. um, so John Boyega's character, mm -hmm. I'm like sit though. Down. Why are you playing super cop? He was around a lot. So <laughs> he goes and assists, and you've seen this in the trailer. He gives the uh, National Guardsmen some coffee. And right at that point, you kind of get a feeling. First of all, why are you bringing out coffee? They're not by you. Well, one of the things that they had said um, 
uh, John Boyega, he, he, he and another guard were guarding a grocery store so that it wouldn't be uh, raided by the um, riot. Right. Okay? So he takes the coffee out there as a uh, way to find out what they're doing there. He's like, I'm going to go get some information. Let me go take him some coffee. So he says, what are you guys doing here? And it's just like... Well, Don't stay yo black ass inside. You know what? That's that's kind of what <laughs> led him down that rabbit hole. Right. You know? <laughs> Way too much. Because the other security guard that stayed in the grocery store, he went home the next day. Right, exactly. He didn't and that's, to, that's he, the goal. He didn't go to jail. I want to go home. Right. And the, the guy was like, uh, I'll stay here if you don't mind. Absolutely. That's what I would have did. You're doing your job. Right. I'm I'm paid to guard this little box. Why am I across the street? What does that do? Nope. Yeah. Staying my ass right here. He was he was a little overzealous about having a gun. What you need, officer? Right. Oh, let's go find the sniper. What? Yeah. I'm not about to go find no sniper. Right. I'm not a police officer. I'm a armed security guard. Right. Absolutely. That's it. Mm-hmm. I'm not a, a trained police officer. I'm not, I wasn't in the army before. Mm -hmm. There's no reason for me to be trying to hunt people down. Absolutely. And he's working so many jobs. So it's just like, you know, security guard by night and then factory worker by day. Right. You don't don't let the security guard job mess up your your job in the morning. Mm -hmm. You getting shot up. He didn't get shot. But if you get shot up hunting down uh, snipers, snipers, now you can't go to work. Right. A little, little bit much. Um, so his, his role in it was a little frustrating, but if that's what he did, if that's what history tells us, I can, I can see what his character was like. You know, he was trying to watch after his own. He, he wanted his, uh, young, young men to get home, you know, and he, he was trying to be that security guard. Right. He was a good guy. He was a good guy. Um, I feel like at times where he should have helped out a little bit more, he didn't. Um, but I, I mean, know, I, I, I don't know how much more he was outnumbered. I don't know how much he, he, he could have helped. You know what? He did the best that he could do. So they think that Easy E's dumbass. We're gonna call him Easy E. I don't know his name in the actual movie, but Easy E's dumbass. All right. <laughs> gonna say, you know what? We gotta teach those military men a lesson. Yeah. And he's gonna start shooting a toy gun yeah. out the window. It, it was a starter gun. Right. Right. And he's surprised a police officer outside the window. Right. He's like, well, all them police officers outside the window. What they doing? What did you mean? What do you mean? They're after you. <laughs> They're after you. Right. So that, that was a smoking gun, literally. Right. Absolutely. And they came in the house, raided everyone. Everyone get the hell outside. They bust them through windows. I'm like, where's the management around here? Right. Like, the management ain't got nothing to say. But anyway, um, and they lined all the black Men up, and they do. They did have two white girls, two and white girls, yeah. it was funny because even even today it probably was still happening. But they talked about how because the two white girls was found in a room with a black guy, which was Anthony Mackie. Anthony Mackie's character, yeah. And the, the police always were livid. Oh yeah. Why you got to screw a black guy? Yeah. They didn't say black guy, they, but you know they weren't having anything about it. Right. So now they're trash too. Oh, yeah. They're slamming him against the wall. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I'm like, I don't know what I would be thinking or what I would be doing at that moment besides just trying to pray. Ironically, the police officers tell them to pray, but go ahead. They they do tell them to pray. I mean, and with everything that's going on, you know, they're putting them all up against the wall, face the wall, you know, and they're hitting each one of them, including the women. So it's just like, if a white girl isn't going to get saved, what makes me oh, think, yeah. as a man in that situation... Oh, yeah, absolutely. I'm done. Yeah. So they're all smacking him around, trying to say, where's the gun? Who had the gun? And then they start playing this game where they bring him each into a room. Now, I would have said, the sniper is yeah. the dude you killed. Right. I, I mean, I'm going to just be honest. I would be scared, but I would have said, the sniper is the dude you killed. Right. Because I don't know what's happening. You got him. They got me at gunpoint, gun to my head, gun to my back. Right. Yeah, you got him, like you said. You, you got him. You got him. You got him. You did your job. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll vouch for that. Just let us go. To be honest, that's kind of what I would have did. Um, I might have said, you know, there was a toy gun. He was the one. I would have just, it would have been done. I would have tried to be, get, to be getting home, right. honestly. And I think that John Boyega's character tried to facilitate that. 
he was going around asking uh, one of the guys that was getting beat up in one of the other rooms, you know, it's like, just take me to go get the gun. Now, question. Yeah. If, because there's a, a, a really close friend, uh, because honestly, I, it's another thing I didn't know, I thought that was kind of cool, that there was um, a member of the, of the dramatics uh, in, in this incident. You know, so, I mean, he wasn't, like, famous. He it wasn't with the group when it became famous, but he was in the group. And he had one of his best friends with him. Right. If your best friend was, you guys are both on on the wall, how would you feel? Like, would you, would you be able to, like, see him get hit in the head or? See, that's the thing, man. Uh, you know, if, if I'm seeing women getting hit, you know, then, then it, I mean, there, there's nothing I can do because, you know, my morals are so strong. And if you're doing it to my friend, oh, I, I just can't because, you know, one, one of the things, I think it was Plato that said, the only way that evil will survive is if good men do nothing, you know? And I, I believe that, you know? if, But, I mean, you're in a situation where your life is on the line, right, you know? And, right. and and you have to be safe. You have to get home, you know? You can save more people if you're still alive, basically. Right. So, but you're playing, It's there's a fine line. It's definitely a fine line. As to what you're doing, because if you break out trying to defend what you think, you know, is going to get you out of that situation at that time, you're probably just going to make it worse, get yourself killed, maybe get your friend killed. Right. You know? It's, it's kind of like... But it's hard. Fight or flight... Mm-hmm. And sometimes flight can be do nothing. Your mind is just like, you know what? I'm gone from the situation. Yeah. Um, and then you got the fight, which is either you could, to me, physically you just run. You yeah. can fight that situation and go. Or you can physically f- try to fight your way through them uh, to not hurt your friend. Kind of like uh, Daryl did when his friends was getting beat up on The Walking Dead. Right, right. <laughs> Uh, I don't know, man. It's it's such a hard thing to even conceive, being that we in 2017, yes, there's still some hardships, but ultimately, at least in California, we do walk around like there's nothing wrong, like there's no racism, like we all love each other, big old melting mm-hmm. pot. You know, everything is, is more uh, systematic. You know, it's the systems that are more racist. So, like, to have it thrown in your face, mm-hmm. like, fuck you, you're not, you're not shit, you're a piece of shit. Right. You know, like, and all those racial slurs. I don't know, man. And then you got gunpoint, you can beat by the police. That's the one part that gets me, man. It's just like... And you don't even, you haven't even done anything. Protect and serve. They have n- nothing to convict you of. I think in that situation, you know... You try to get away, maybe they beat you up, but hopefully they just take you to jail just to get you out of that situation. Man, but you don't know who is on what side. They could have ran out the house and hopefully the other police officers would just arrest them. But honestly, right. running from the police, they're all one team, man. Yeah. If I, if he, if they would have ran out the house, I think they would have might have just got shot on the way out. They probably would have because they show that in a lot of these scenes. Right. You're running, then you're getting shot in the back. Right, right. Oh, man. They, and then the, the police are so trigger-happy in this movie. And I mean, like, literally trigger-happy. They cannot wait to a black person to they, do something. They, they, they want to use their arms. It, it, was, right. it was very... Uh, they're like, yeehaw! It, 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 it was so obvious. They're, they're young, and they're just full of hateful, like, energy. You know, they, they just have too much time on their hands. That, you know, oh, it's a battlefield out there, you know? And you know what? The, the another important thing I thought that was in the movie because a lot of people say, "Well, not all police officers are like that." But when I'm being pulled over, when I see everyone in the same uniform, I don't know who's the good one and who's not. They all look the same to me, and when you don't stand up for righteousness, when you don't correct a wrong, when you don't point out an evil, to me, you're just as evil. You're just as responsible as that person that is committing the crime. If you don't stand up, accomplice. So they had a lot of police officers that weren't really wanted to even be a part of that, right. but they saw it and they just walked away. They have other departments, and it, it kind of goes to show you that 
the Detroit police at the time were very, you know, corrupt with the situation that was going on there. And when another police department showed up on scene to intervene, the other cops were letting their maybe superior officer know that they're they're out of control, basically. You know, they're, right. they're over there. They're interrogating them. They're you know, right. the state them. police came came as well, and they were like, right. "Oh, let Detroit PD handle that. They'll take care of this. This is their we don't investigation. want any parts of it." Right. And to they, me, they turn the other way. You're just as guilty mm -hmm. because you didn't stand up for what's right. And that way, in, in that case, I don't know who's who's the good one. Because right. if no one's standing up, you guys are all yeah. like that. You mm -hmm. know, so, and I've had some run-ins with the police officers, with, with police, where I thought I was going to get my ass whooped um, for not having a turning signal. That's what they said anyway. I don't, I don't think that that happened, but that's what he said. And I got out the car, get out the damn car! And it's 15 police officers. And I'm like, oh, shit, I'm about to get my ass. What? I was really scared for my life. I honestly, you know, because they was yelling at me. You know, where are you going? Are you you have Are you on parole? Have you ever, Are you on probation? All this stuff, you know. I'm, I'm like, oh my god. Oh, and another time I had to get in. They made me get into the back seat with handcuffs. You know, so I don't know. I can never tell. All I can do is pray that this man don't want to just shoot me. Yeah, and I can just get out. And go home and not have to worry about it. And and hopefully the worst thing that happens is I get a ticket. Right. Yep. That's the that's the worst yeah. thing I want to happen. Well, you get you get to go home at the end of the day. Right. You know. And so I understood what what I was seeing. That looked real to me. Like I'm that. Yep. 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 They do that. Yep. They do that too. Now I mean I I've, I've had some good experiences too, but I just don't ever know. That's what I'm saying. I can't tell what's about to happen because they all wear the same it's, uniform. It's, it's, it's unpredictable. Everything that you see about this, as history shows, not not much has changed almost. I mean, no. we, we, we see a lot of these incidents keep continuing, you know? We just have more cell phones around now, you know? Right. Which is why we're barely hearing about this story now because we got all the facts and we got a new story. So we got more history to tell. Cell phones are so important because what happens is out of sight, out of mind. Right. And when things like this happen, mm -hmm. people are like, oh, you don't know what you're talking about. Be quiet. You're just crying. Just play football. But there are a lot of injustices that happen. And when you are, and people can say, oh, well, black people kill black people. Well, people kill people in a vicinity, okay? And most of the most people in the ghetto are probably black, you know. So when we all in the ghetto, that's what happens. But we're not when when black people kill black people, they go to jail. When they when they're found, they go to jail. They don't continue their lives as if nothing happened. And that we're not being paid. Those are criminals. Right. Police officers are being paid mm -hmm. to do a service. Right. Yeah. And they're doing a disservice. Even when they're suspected, they're still on a leave, you know? Right. They paid leave. Paid leave. They're on a vacation. Basically. Vacation. Yeah. It's time for a vacation. Eating cereal. Too stressed Cheerios. out. Cheerios. <laughs> Chilling. Waiting on the court date so they can get acquitted and go back to work. We come to the ending. We come to the ending. And everyone is either dead or their ass is whooped. So at the end of the night, basically, we got three people on the dead. Easy E's character and then uh, two other guys. And, you know, because right. they, w they they just couldn't get away from the situation. Now, the, 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 the white guys, the police officers, they say, you know what? Our, we don't know what we're doing here. Mm -hmm. We just want to get out of here. Right. So let's let them go. Yeah. And we'll come up with a story later. Right. They attacked it, us. And so it was self-defense. So they let two guys go. They're like, what happened here? Nothing. I didn't see nothing. Nothing happened. Right. And the other two guys, they agreed. They took out to the back door. And then the one friend. The one friend. Uh, he's like, that's a dead body. Y'all killed that man right there. And the police officer was like, oh, let's try this again. <laughs> right. You don't see nothing. And honestly, I don't see shit. That's what, that's what I would have been. Because my friend already, he was one of the first two that, got, that, that escaped. Mm -hmm. So... I'm trying to go home like him. Yeah. 
Just take the time to be right. The only thing I could imagine is this this young man was traumatized. He just got a full on beaten the entire night, sees a dead body, and he just can't get over it. You know, it's just like running through his head. And some people take these traumatic experiences differently. You know, he was already post traumatic right. because stress. His personality, he was very timid at first. He was, yeah. But as he as the night went on and he kept getting beat up and seeing other people get beat up, he became angry. Right. Which is how the mentality builds with the riots. Right. You know, because black people, honestly, we've always been a peaceful people for all through slavery, all through Jim Crow. You know, even even now, we're not going around just uh, shooting people because we we mad at you. You know, so he that's how it builds up. Yeah. You know, they're just tired. And I feel like that's how he was. It's late in the night. He's tired. He, he was done. I mean, like, he, 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 he couldn't point. get over the facts. So good point. Eventually, you know. He just cracked. He didn't, give, he didn't give a shit. And then the officers murdered him point blank and executed him. So right. there was no getting away from that. You know? Right. So now we're at the trial. We're at a trial and they're getting all the witnesses in. You and know? Jim. So, Jim. Some Jim from the office. From the office. He's our defendant lawyer. He's one of my favorite actors. I was like, oh, you about to mess it all up. Here goes, you should have never took this role. Here goes the rest of the way that I ever see you, Jim. Right. I'm about to hate you for life You're now. my hero. <laughs> you're my hero. You did awesome in 13 hours. Right. Now you're going to throw What's it all away. There? Throw it all away. But luckily, his lawyer skills weren't up to par, and I didn't really get didn't a buy sense it. of his I just, and that's, You know lawyer. what? And that's another reason why I didn't give it a five, because there, there's parts like that where I feel like the characters won't... Either they got out of character with the police officers, you know, kind of dragging the whole situation right. out. Or the and, portrayal. And then the lawyer, I felt like, yeah. should have been better. However, however, if in fact he was a bad lawyer, then he did a really good portrayal. Because they, the justice system we know was broken and they were right. going to get out of the situation. I guess you didn't need to be a good lawyer. You didn't need to be a good lawyer right. if you're defending white men and white police officers. Police officers for sure. In the time is of this, this ordeal. Yeah. Not guilty. Not guilty. All, Not, I, can, all I have to say is, your honor, your honor. Right. Jury, right. come on. Yeah. And then they get off. I don't need to have all these facts. The entire jury was nothing but Caucasian. They, right. They, they were all white. All they, European. They, they didn't really, you know, whatever, represent, you know, the people that right. were Right. It was trial. definitely not. Well, you know what? John Boyega didn't have anyone. You know what? John Boyega... Was lucky yeah. to be on the same trial as them. Absolutely, because he would have went down. Yeah, he would have went down for sure. Absolutely. You know they didn't. Uh, they didn't allow the confession that the police gave because they end up cracking and they gave a confession that they did this. Two of the cops gave the other one just kind of inadmissible, lied. inadmissible yeah. in the court of law. Right. What? What are we talking about? And the charge. Of violence, excessive violence, assault. assault we innocent, the jury not guilty on the charges of assault. Yeah, even though they all look jacked up right now, and one ended up in the hospital. <laughs> right, even the girls got stitches. Right, not oh, guilty. Man. What are you looking at? They were beat to a pulp. What are you looking at? It, it was just amazing, and you know, from Emmett Till to these guys. To Rodney King, to um, you know all, all these other people who get who who or who experience injustice that just get and then and the police officers get away with it. Yeah, you know it's just not cool. You know we really I don't understand. Right is right. You know what I'm saying you don't want to put your 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 own people in jail, but I mean at some point it's got to give. We can't we can't have society like this. Right. No. You know, we have to be able to trust one another. Yeah. And if we want to be able to trust one another, when injustices happen, mm -hmm. someone needs to stand up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. And that way, that's the only way society is going to go on. We have to be able to trust. If I'm thinking that yeah. you, you know, going to stab me in my back all the time, then I can't trust you to do anything. We go nowhere. And there's just, just no way to live. You know, we need to progress. We need to thrive. We need to be able to not just worry about survival. And being civil, but we need to be able to back each other up is what it is. Right. You know, it's just like, w w at what point in our history are we going to get past these petty things? You know, with all these natural disasters that happen, you know, on 
you know, the daily and, and people dying out of that, we can't just be surviving. We, we need to be able to progress. Right. You know? It's really, it's really sad, you know, because black people want to be Americans so freaking bad. And, you know, it's a great country. You know, I, we, I'm very blessed. We're able to do this, Absolutely. you know. We're nobodies, but we're up here with HD cameras and lighting and stuff like that, yeah. you know. And so we want to be a part of it so bad. Even this guy right here. Yeah. But when you look at who the laws are made for, mm -hmm. who uh, the Constitution is made for, who who the 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 uh, judicial system is made for, we just don't feel like real citizens. And that's, that's the discussion that needs to happen. Like, unfortunately, yeah, I was born here. Yeah, I was raised to, you know, salute the flag, mm -hmm. you know, right hand over my heart, right. you know, and sing the national anthem. And, but in day-to-day -day life, when it's time for me to get a job, when it's time for me to uh, drive through the city, mm -hmm. I, don't, I, I don't really feel like a citizen. I feel like, you know... Uh, I don't want to say a criminal, but a, uh, oh, what's that called? Hold on. I feel like a, oh, I feel like a refugee. You know, I'm, I'm in a country that don't give a shit about me, you know, and any, I don't get no second chances. I mess up one time, that's it. I'm in jail. You know, a lot of, I've had teachers tell me that I'm not going to be nothing. I'm not going to graduate. You know, like, what are you, well, as a teacher, you shouldn't be saying things like this. No. You know, like you. You shouldn't be saying to kids or about kids, oh, he going to be in jail one day. He in the first grade. How you know that? Yeah. Like that. It's just like, there's those type of things that really keep us separate. And I, I know they like to think that this type of protest keeps us separate. But honestly, we need to have a discussion. You know, I understand that everyone should be proud of who they are. I love being black. I have no problems like that. I don't want to be white. I don't want to be Hispanic. I don't, I like being black. You know, so there's some things that I hold dear to me, and, I, and there's some things that I hold dear to you. I, I like how we're all different, is what it is. Nothing we, wrong with that. I love all the different cultures that we're in. I mean, we live in L.A., you know? Right. Absolutely. It's a melting pot. It's a melting know? pot. And there's nothing wrong with that. But I, as far as, like, just killing someone or hurting someone because they're different than you, that's, that's not right. That's kind of where the line needs to be drawn, especially because we don't live in no uh, hectic society. No. We're not trying to survive. This is not a war zone. Right. I mean, this is this is... We're living, we're living good. This is the first world problem. You right, know? Like, exactly. Really. And we live like kings here. Yeah. You know, compared to everyone else, we live like kings in America. Yeah. Let's not try to make it seem like, you know, anyone's taking jobs from anybody. There's all type of opportunity. You just got to just work for it. And as a black man mm -hmm. that's saying that, that is real. You know what I'm saying? All this, they taking the jobs. What jobs? What jobs are people taking from you? Because you don't, those are jobs you don't want anyway. You don't want to pick no fruit. You don't want to wipe no uh, toilet seats. No one's taking no jobs, okay? So there's no need to hate each other right now. Or, or hopefully ever. But anyway, let's not make it too much of a political conversation. It is about the movie. It is about the movie. But this is what makes this movie so good is that it gets you talking. And right. it's not just something to throw away. You know, we could have seen Dark Tower. But, you know... A little afraid. This, 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 this movie was... On a different uh, level, it was very intellectual. Right, we want to see a good movie. We tried to see all these bad ones. It's been so. a rough day today, and uh, <sighs> definitely a rough day. And but you know what? I love Idris Elba. I think he's a great actor. Absolutely. But I mean, there's there's other factors that come into a movie, yeah. and I just didn't want to watch a bad one. This know? movie, however, I would recommend to go see it. Definitely. Now, if you're if you want to see a dramatic movie, if you're in that mindset, I want to see a good movie, dramatic, good acting. This is the movie for you. If yep. you want to see something that you think is you're going to be a little bit more uplifted about, probably not. You know, if, if you're having a hard time, you know, gauge the situation for yourself. But, you know, if you, be, if you be, like, be, if you be like good myself. movies, this is going to be one. This it's is a good one movie. I would definitely buy on DVDs. It's definitely one that if you watch Black History uh, films on, in February, this needs to be a part of your collection for that month. Um, it needs to be talked about. It, everyone needs to see it. White, black, Mexican, Chinese, whatever. We all need to see it because this does need to be a discussion. And if, you know, we can talk, you know, if, if us as black people can have a discussion, then maybe other people can have a discussion 
and about their, their 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 hardships with their group of people. And we can all just like, you know what? I feel you. You know what? I did have that mindset back in the day, but you know what? You changed it. We're not and too I want to be better. We're not too you know? different. We all go to work. We're not work. different at all. Yeah. Just different shades. And we, we have different got, cultures. We know? all got blood, red blood, two two lungs, one brain, two yeah. eyes. Like it, it's we're it's just the the, the skin colors. Yeah. That's it. We're not we're not just trying to survive, you know. We can learn so much and all we have to do is talk to each other. And we can have so much fun. I have so much fun with this guy. I really do. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, who would have thought that me being in this type of environment where I work, I would have such a good friend that we we, we get along so well. We're here every week for you guys. Oh man. Not it's, just for you, because we just enjoy it. Yeah. It's not all this, you know, well, I don't know. He's right. Mexican and he's I'm black. Right. It's so not, petty. Right. So it's not even on the I don't even think like that. Why would you? Why would you? You know, so go see the movie, guys. We don't want to keep ranting about it, but right. it was a great movie. You're going to be moved. You're going to be right. educated. And you're going to, you know, want to have to, you want to, you're going to want to have a conversation for it's good, sure. It's a good piece of American history. Definitely. That needs to be talked about. So, all right, guys, please like, share, subscribe, and comment. We don't know what you guys think. You know, did, did we make any points? What did we miss? Did we say anything that you guys missed? We want to know what you guys think. Did you go see the film? What were the reason why you went to go see the I, film? I, Let us know. I don't anything. want to offend you, but you know, this is something that should be discussed. You know? Definitely. I, I, if I offend you, you're the reason why this needs to be talked about. If I offended you, you are the reason why we have these issues. T- tell us why today. Tell us what exactly. I want if anyone dislikes you. If you hit that dislike, I command you <laughs> to tell me why. Don't just be hitting it and then cower on and click to the next video. Let me know what you guys think. So please like, share, subscribe, and comment. And look at our check out our other videos that we have, guys. It's probably somewhere dangling around down here somewhere. I don't know. <laughs> um, but I'm your boy DeAnthony. Hold on. And we're Break Room Bliss, baby. Peace. Peace. That was good.